In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you all, and good afternoon to you all. You're all very welcome this afternoon, as I welcome you to the Basilica of Our Lady, uh, Queen of Ireland. I welcome those of you who are joining us on our webcam from all over the world for our 12 o'clock Mass uh, today. And wherever you, are, wherever you have come from, near or far, parishioner, pilgrim, or visitor alike, you're most welcome as we join all our prayers together in the course of this Mass for whatever our intentions are and whatever we need to pray for. We celebrate this fifth Sunday of Easter and we remember in a special way today in this Mass as we pray for uh, Dame Judy Coyne, whose anniversary Mass occurs today. Dame Judy was the founder uh, along with her husband of Knock Shrine Society, of the wonderful stewards and handmaids that you see who are a voluntary group here at the Shrine uh, for the, over 80 years, 81 years in fact this year. And uh, we give thanks and praise to God for them and for all their work. We remember Dame Judy and pray for the happy repose of her soul. So in order now to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Mass worthily, we call to mind our faults, our, our failings. We ask the Lord to forgive us our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord of mercy, Christ of mercy, Lord of mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul and Barnabas went back through Lystria and Iconium to Antioch. They put fresh heart into the disciples, encouraging them to persevere with the faith. We all have to experience many hardships, they said, before we enter the kingdom of God. In each of these churches, they appointed elders, and with prayer and fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. They passed through Poseidon and reached Pamphylia then, after proclaiming the word at Perga, they went down to Attilia, and from there they sailed to Antioch, where they had originally been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had now completed. On their arrival, they assembled the church and gave an account of all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith to the pagans. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. The Lord is kind and full of compassion, slow to anger, abounding in love. How good is the Lord to all, compassionate to all his creatures. Response. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. All your creatures shall thank you, O Lord, and your friends shall repeat their blessing. They shall speak to the glory of your reign, and declare your might, O God. Make known to men your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your reign. Response. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. Yours is an everlasting kingdom. Your role lasts from age to age. Response. I will bless your name forever, O God, my King. A 
second reading. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw a new heaven and a new earth. The first heaven and the first earth had disappeared now, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city and the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, as beautiful as a bride all dressed for her husband. Then I heard a loud voice call from the throne, you see the city, here God lives among men. He will make them his home among them. They shall be his people and he will be their God. His name is God with them. He will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death and no more mourning or sadness. The word of the past has gone. Then the one sitting on the throne spoke. Now I am making the whole of the new creation, the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas had gone, Jesus said, Now has the Son of Man been glorified, and in him God has been glorified. If God has been glorified in him, God will in turn glorify him in himself, and will glorify him very soon. My, my little children, I shall not be with you much longer. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you. You also must love one another. By this love you have for one another, everyone will know that you are my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. As the question goes, what's in a name? What's in our own particular name? What's in the name of the place that we come from? What is in the name of our family? What is in the name of what we call ourselves, whether it's by our family name, our Christian name, whether it's by uh, the name of the country we hail from, our area, or whatever the case may be, there is a lot in a name. We take names seriously. Names are very important to us, in particular our own. You cast maybe a mind back where people might have forgotten your name or maybe uh, mispronounced your name or called you something completely different to what you were known as. Uh, you kind of get a little bit, well, that's not my name. Uh, that's not me. Why we, I suppose, pin an association in terms of a name personally, from a locality, from a country, or even a continent for that matter, is because it says something about our own identity. The first Christian community shared everything in common. And the first thing we hear about a guy called Barnabas, whose actual name means son of encouragement, is that we're told that he sold everything and he laid his money at the apostles' feet. Luke describes him as a good man, full of the spirit and full of faith, whose encouragement resulted in many people persevering in faith. And there was one man in particular who, helped Barnab who was helped by Barnabas, and that was Paul the great persecutioner. After his conversion, Paul tells us that he spent three years in the Arabian desert in a long renewal of the spirit. And when he emerged from the wilderness, he went to Jerusalem to see Peter. Now, they gave him a cool reception. They didn't like him. And you wouldn't blame them. No doubt because they found it very, very difficult to believe that such an accomplished persecutor of their community now wanted to be numbered among them. 
So with very indecent haste, they wanted to get rid of him. So they sent him up to Antioch. They sent him back to Tarsus, first of all, and then they sent him to a man who could deal with him, possibly. But one man encouraged him, and that man was Barnabas. He gave Paul a new life, a new direction, and he decided to sponsor him in Antioch, the capital of Syria at the time. He sought out Paul, and he invited him to come, become his assistant, and for a full year, the two of them ministered together, Paul and Barnabas. And it was at Antioch that the followers of Christ were first known as Christians, another name. That's where they were called Christians for the first time. So clearly, Paul and Barnabas fulfilled the command by Jesus in the gospel, by this love that you have for one another, everyone will know that you're my disciples. They traveled widely together. Uh, that's widely, not wildly. Uh, they tra traveled all over the place and heard, as we heard in the first reading, they put fresh heart into the disciples, encouraging them to persevere in faith. Paul extended to others the encouragement that he received from Barnabas. And for Barnabas, he saw something in Paul that no other apostle saw. He saw beyond the face of the persecutor into the heart of the man who was struggling to be an apostle. Barnabas called out the best in Paul. And he did this not from a long distance, but through staying with him for 1,400 miles of traveling and preaching. Now, that's a lot of sponsorship. That's a lot of friendship. That's an awful lot of encouragement. When Paul falls off his horse, when he fell off his horse, it is Barnabas who turns to him to help him to shape his new name. Because remember, he was called Saul. His new name was Paul. So Barnabas lives up to his own name, son of encouragement, by helping Paul to live up to his new name, apostle of Jesus Christ. By his encouragement, Barnabas actually gives shape to Paul's life. And he does that not with idle chatter, or vague well-wishing, and you'll be all right and don't worry about it, and there you go. But by staying with Paul. He invests his time, his love, and his energy in the person that Paul can become, and that is encouragement. And all of us who need encouragement from time to time, all of us who like our name to be called out correctly, and in the right time, and right place, all of us who like to uh, be known where we come from and we're proud of whether we're from the locality or the country or whatever the case may be. We like that correct. All of us which need this, who need this encouragement can think of the investment that Barnabas put into Paul and us, we, each and every one of us, in our own turn, might ask, us that, might ask ourselves that question. Who do we give encouragement to? Who do we support? Even when we don't want to support them. Who do we help, even if we get frustrated and tired and know we're going to say the same thing again and again and again and again? It's not so much what has been said. It is simply the presence. Think of the 1,400 miles that he traveled with Paul. It's simply the presence. It's simply that person knowing that you're there. there. You don't have to say a word. It's still encouragement. It still reflects the Christian values. It still frustrates us. It still gets under our skin, especially if we're trying to uh, help somebody in terms of maybe addiction or trouble in the family or bereavement or whatever the case may be, but it's persevering in encouragement. That's what we're called to take from the readings today. That's how we will be known as disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And so today, encouraged and renewed by God's word, we bring our needs and the needs of the church and the world before our Heavenly Father. We pray, pray for Pope Francis, for our own Archbishop Michael Neary, that they be blessed with health and strength and wisdom for their ministry of leadership and service in the church. Lord, hear us. We pray <clears throat> that Christians everywhere may take fresh heart through their faith in the risen Lord and so be renewed in joy. Lord, hear us. We pray for our young people who are preparing for examinations, that they may find inspiration in their time of need and that their efforts may be rewarded. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are ill at this time. We all know, as I always say, we always know somebody who's sick. So whether it's in our families or somebody that we know or somebody that we're praying for in a particular way, those of you perhaps that are here even today, those of you who are joining us on our webcam, if you are ill or confined to homes, nursing homes or, and hospitals, we pray for you as well. So we take this moment and maybe bring them their names, which are so important to our own minds and before the Lord. Lord, grant them your healing help. Lord, hear us. And as today is the 24th of April, it's exactly 100 years ago today um, that the rising started. So we pray for our country as we recall the sacrifices of past generations that have made, they have made on our behalf and that we may contribute to the well-being of future generations in our own country. Lord, hear us. We pray for the Knox Shrine Society, for our stewards and handmaids, as we remember Dame Judy Coyne today. We pray for the gift of volunteerism uh, of those who dedicate themselves to that great society for the past 81 years. We ask the Lord to bless them in their, in their work, in their dedication, and in their voluntary activity here at Our Lady Shrine. Lord, hear us. And finally, for all who have died, as we include Dame Judy Coyne, whose anniversary occurs at this time. We pray for, that, all the die, uh, that all who have died may enter into the fullness of joy and peace through their heavenly inheritance. Lord, hear us. Amen. Loving God, who is always with us and who makes all things new, hear the prayers of your people, which we make through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now, friends, can I ask you to pass the bags there? You'll find bags there at the end of your seats. If you like, if, uh, can I ask you to pass them along the seat? and to your, uh, to, uh, behind you as well. So when you finish the row, pass them behind you. And as always, this collection goes towards the upkeep of Knock Shrine and the provision of the many facilities that we have here at Knock. And your, generos your generosity obviously will be hugely and greatly appreciated. So if you'd like to take them up, please, and pass the bags behind you. And um, uh, maybe you can bring them forward then when you've finished to the tables that are here in front of the sanctuary.
sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it, our, make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We stand now for the preface. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as they attain. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. You never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Joseph and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Francis our Pope, Michael our Bishop, and the Order of Bishops and Clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously, graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. 
in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, Dame Judy Coyne and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. confidence and courage, we stand and pray to our Heavenly Father in the words that the Lord gave us. Our Father, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And we turn to each other now and offer each other that sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Could I ask the help of maybe four or five ministers of the Eucharist, if you're, if you're present, to come and to help with distribution of Holy Communion, if you'd like to go to the back of the sanctuary here. Those who can only receive from the chalice can do so at the back of the sanctuary. And when you're coming forward for Holy Communion, can I ask you to use the central aisle of each chapel when you're coming forward and leave the side aisles to return to your seats. It just um, facilitates ease of movement. If there's somebody that cannot come forward from your seat, incapacitate in any way, remain where you are, let us know and we will come to you.
O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. We offer a prayer to Mary, and we do so for um, pilgrim groups that are here today as well, the Eucharistic Adoration Societies around the country, and also Common Nasagarth and Winchon na uh, who are here with us um, for the afternoon as well. And we pray that their pilgrimage will be grace-filled and rewarding on a number of levels. We pray together, and maybe ask Elge, she the vaha wira, the holar the grasa, on chirna lat. Ispani huija maro, Ispani a tarot of Vaniasa. And you've with a Wahaje, given in Pakianish, Agasora Wash. Amen. Our Lady of Knock, Saint Joseph, Saint John the Evangelist. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Just for the final blessing, I will bless any religious objects you may happen to have with you, and just to thank you for being here this, after, uh, this afternoon, and to thank our children's choir as well. Thank you very much indeed uh, uh, for enhancing our liturgy. Uh, today we begin our season. Uh, we is the first day of our season, and so, uh, for the parish and for staff of the Shrine, we, be, we have our beginning of the season Mass, which will take place on Wednesday evening next at 7.30 in the parish church. Refreshments afterwards in the Rest and Care Centre with an update on our Witness to Hope progress uh, over the course of the last year and what we intend to do for, please God, this season coming. So we'd ask you to join us for that Mass, please, next Wednesday at 7.30 for staff and for parishioners. Uh, a one-day conference on climate change, which is open to everyone, uh, the Pope's encyclical, based on the Pope's encyclical Laudato Si, will take place next Saturday, 30th of April, in St. John's Rest and Care Centre from 10 until 4. It's an all-day uh, conference on climate change and linking in with Laudato Si. Uh, a number of well-respected and renowned speakers will be here, uh, linking in with that whole idea of our I suppose the emergency that is now in terms of our environment. So any of you who are interested in that topic or would like to come along, it will be proved to be a wonderful, exciting day in terms of input and uh, uh, simply listening, listening as well to experts in the area. So you're more than welcome to join us for that and I'd encourage you to do so. Uh, as I say, we start our pilgrimage season today, so say a prayer for a good season for all of us and for all who come here, like yourselves, who visit the Shrine and who have a love of the Shrine. And indeed, for those of you who have been joining us on our webcam as well, we continue to hold you in our prayers and our thoughts right throughout the season. And we welcome you to participate in all our liturgies here in the Basilica whenever you can do so. So now, if you'd like to hold up your religious objects and your, your um, um, medals and beads, Almighty Father, bless these medals and religious objects, and may your saving presence be with those who use them and in the homes in which they are placed, and I bless them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you all. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. We stand now for our final hymn.